morning, and good morning to all who are watching online on our live stream as well. Uh, for those who are here in the room, uh, communion and bulletins are out on the table in the narthex. Uh, if you miss those, feel free to head back out and grab them. For those watching on our live stream online, the bulletin can be found on our website, stpetersmckinney.com. Just a few announcements uh, that I'll point out to you today. First, a welcome to our organist, Gavin Craig, uh, new choir master and organist joining us uh, from the Houston area uh, for his uh, first service today. Uh, we're very excited to have you, Gavin. Uh, Christmas angels, thank you to everyone who participated this year. Uh, St. Peter's really stepped up in a huge way. I'm thankful for all of you and for that very needed ministry in our community. Those are due today, so if you don't have them today, uh, please let Deacon Janice know when you'd like to drop those off. Uh, and please note also that volunteers for the pickup event uh, are needed and the sign up is uh, out for you uh, to use. Uh, there's a blood drive this coming Saturday the 12th uh, down in the parish hall. Uh, contact Deacon Janice if you're interested. That is something that's very needed in the community right now, uh, and there are not a lot of people signed up at the moment. So please, uh, if you're available, uh, take a look, uh, see if you can find a time that works, and come give blood. Lessons in carols will be a little bit different this year, obviously. Um, we have a couple of opportunities that are uh, similar but different from each other. So I wanna talk about that for just a second. Uh, this coming Sunday, the 13th at 5 p.m., we'll have an outdoor lessons and carols. Uh, that will be the one where the congregation gets to do the bulk of the singing. Uh, we will still be masks on and socially distant for that service, uh, but you'll get to sing your, your favorite Advent and Christmas hymns. Uh, so please come out and join us there. We'll have uh, a, a small group from the choir, uh, what I'm calling the Corona Choir, that'll be leading us, um, and it'll be a, a really lovely evening. Uh, we will do that regardless of temperature. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, if there's precipitation, we're not on. Uh, but regardless of temperature, we will be out there at 5 p.m. So bundle up if it's cool. And then the following Sunday, the 20th at 5 p.m., we have an online version uh, of Lessons and Carols. Uh, we have a, a number of uh, uh, singers, some special music that night. It'll be really lovely. Um, so please tune in for that as well. Christmas Eve services are available for sign-up. Uh, you can go to our website, stpetersmckinney.com backslash Christmas, and you can see all of the opportunities. We will have outdoor services. Again, those will happen regardless of temperature. Uh, so if it's chilly and you wanna come outdoors, please bundle up. Outdoor services at 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Indoor services at 5 p.m., 7.30 p.m., and 10 p.m. Uh, the 10 p.m. is right one and will include incense. Uh, and the, um, uh, before each service, we'll have another opportunity to sing some Christmas carols. Uh, so come 45 minutes before uh, the service that you're coming to. We'll be outside. We'll sing Christmas carols together. And then at the end of each of the services, uh, we'll go back outside and sing Silent Night by Candlelight together. Uh, it'll be a really lovely evening, and I hope you'll worship with us in the way that's right for you. Uh, online, we will have uh, 5 p.m. There will be a 5 p.m. online service that includes some special music at the beginning uh, and um, some of our children from around the parish telling the Christmas story. And then the 10 p.m. will be live streamed. Uh, so those are your online options. We'll have an Advent prayer vigil on Wednesday the 16th. So if you're looking for an opportunity and especially those of you who have been worshiping with us online, uh, to come into this space and to have some quiet and to center your hearts and to pray, uh, that is a good opportunity to do that. You can sign up. Uh, it'll only be two family units in the church at any given time. Uh, we'll have some prayer resources available for you uh, and just good time to be in this space and to take a moment uh, of quiet this Advent with God. Uh, so sign up for that if you are interested. And then finally, uh, I have an announcement that I'm very excited about. On December 20th, that's the fourth Sunday of Advent, uh, the Sunday right before Christmas, we will have a special guest preacher at St. Peter's. 
Uh, he will be with us digitally. Uh, so we will have a, a screen in here. This is the only time you'll ever see me wanting to put a screen in church. Uh, we'll have a digital guest preacher, uh, the Right Reverend Michael Curry. Uh, Michael Curry is the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. Uh, and this is not a generic sermon that he's putting out there for, you know, Episcopalians far and wide. This is uh, for us at St. Peter's, and we're incredibly thankful. Uh, so please join us for worship that day. Uh, again, in the way that's right for you. Let's take a moment to center our hearts and to pray before we begin. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. 
the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass writhers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with night, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense are before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, and his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, who were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. 
One day, your home was ransacked, your local church destroyed, your town burnt to the ground, and you and your family were banished to a foreign land, away from everything comforting and familiar to you. If you can imagine the pain of such an experience, you can begin to understand what the people of Judah experienced in their exile to Babylon. At the time of Isaiah, the people of Judah, that's the southern kingdom, were guilty of many sins, the most grievous of them, idolatry. Isaiah was commissioned by God to preach to Judah, but God knew that the mission would be unsuccessful, and that the punishment for Judah's sins would come from the hands of the Babylonians. The Babylonian invaders ravaged the land of Judah. Jerusalem was razed to the ground, and the temple was destroyed. Judah's most prominent citizens were deported to Babylon, exiled from their homeland. They spent 50 years in exile in a strange and unfamiliar land. For the chosen people, this was a time of deep loss and sorrow. But then, hope. Cyrus, the king of Persia, conquered Babylon in 539 B.C. Cyrus, the new leader of that region, gave permission for all the Judeans to return to their homeland, and he encouraged them to rebuild their temple. This was a moment of great hope. The Babylonians, who had so cruelly ravaged their land and deported their people, were humiliated by another foreign power, and the new victor was allowing the chosen people to return to their ancestral homeland. The winds had changed. The Judeans could come home. And that is the context for the proclamation which begins today's reading from Isaiah, a passage that's familiar to many of us because it's featured in Handel's Messiah. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term. Her penalty is paid. She has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. God is saying through Isaiah that Judah has served her term of exile. She has paid the penalty for her sins. And in fact, her punishment was double what she really deserved. Which is not to say that God was being excessive, but suggests that sometimes the sufferings we undergo do not so neatly correspond to what we deserve to undergo. Job can tell us, a lot about that. Some of you can tell us about that too. So the dominant note here is consolation. God is comforting his people, speaking tenderly to them, being gentle after a long season of harshness. It's time to come home. Now Babylon is almost exactly east of Jerusalem with a large desert wilderness in between them. One could go around this desert that was, in fact, the normal route between Babylon and Jerusalem. But Isaiah continues, A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. In other words, we're not going around. We're not taking the long way. We don't have time to traverse mountains or descend into valleys. We don't have time for this to be a treacherous expedition. 
we want to get home as quickly and safely as possible. So we're going straight through the desert from Babylon to Jerusalem. The Lord is going before the people to clear out the way, to make it even, a super highway in the desert. And it's a one-way road. We ain't going back. Returning from exile was a fresh start, a new beginning, where the people could move forward into God's new plans for them. New walls, a new temple, a new life. Fast forward 500 years. Enter John the Baptizer. Like Isaiah, he has been entrusted with a message of consolation to Israel, that the long-awaited Messiah is finally going to make his appearance. The arrival of the Messiah, the anointed one of God, who has been prophesied about and speculated about for centuries, his arrival was imminent. And John the Baptist sees himself as the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. The king will soon be here. Make straight his paths. Don't make his way difficult. Don't put obstacles in his way. Clear it out. Make it straight. Prepare yourself so that when the Messiah arrives, his way into your heart is as unobstructed as possible. And that is the purpose of John's baptism for repentance. By acknowledging their sins and confessing them to God, the people were getting right with God. They were preparing their hearts so that when the Messiah arrived, they could respond to his teaching in faith. Like the return from the exile, this moment right before the advent of the Messiah is an opportunity for a new beginning. As they were dunked in the waters of the Jordan, those who were baptized were cleansed from their sins and given the chance to start fresh so they could experience the new and wonderful things that God would be doing through his Messiah. So we've discussed what this passage meant for Isaiah and his original audience and what it meant for John. What does it mean for us? Many of us feel that we are in an exile today, that 2020 as a year has been one long exile. We have been taken away from what is familiar and comforting to us. The things we thought we could count on have been stripped from us, and we have found ourselves in a strange and foreign land. And I could not help, when reading this passage this week, to think how easily one could read this passage from Isaiah in light of the world's current struggles. How easily it could be that we could say that at the end of this pandemic, we will hear God say to us, you have served your term, your penalty is paid, you have received from the Lord's hand double for all your sins. It is an interesting theological move, but one I hesitate to make for two reasons. The first is that to apply this passage directly to our current situation suggests that the pandemic is a punishment for human sin, which of course is possible, very difficult to prove. And secondly, that the way to atone for our sins is to just patiently suffer through all this until our term is served and our penalty is paid. But the cross teaches us that it is Christ who pays the penalty for our sins and serves our turn. Atonement remains his act, and not our own. And yet there is something in this passage that speaks to us today. We are in need of a moment of consolation right now. We yearn for God to speak tenderly to us and to comfort us. We need a moment of consolation, like Judah needed after the exile. For many, if not all of us, this year has felt like a treacherous and uneven terrain filled with adversity, loss, and grief. Do you believe that God is going before us and making his path straight? Do you believe that God is clearing out the road for us and making the uneven terrain of our lives smoother in the months to come? Do you believe that God has a new beginning in store for you. Advent is a time to remember that God is constantly coming into our lives, ready to lead us into the new paths He is marking out in advance for us, like the return from the exile or the advent of the Messiah. 
God is preparing us for a new beginning, a fresh start, when we can move forward into what God has for us this Advent, this Christmas, and in 2021. So my encouragement would be for this week, for you to ask God to prepare your heart so that you are ready for whatever new beginnings God has in store for you. Allow Him to work in your heart and clear away any obstructions to His presence in your life. Let Him clear those obstacles away so that He can lead you like a shepherd into the year that's ahead of us. I believe there is a moment coming very soon when God will again comfort us and speak tenderly to us, when He will speak peace to his faithful people. Soon, it will be time to come home. Let us prepare for that moment with joy. Amen. One God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you in love, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. For the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may be seated. 
If you are celebrating a birthday or anniversary, however, I ask you to stand, please. If you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary, for those of you who are at home, please go ahead and write that in the comments so we may pray for you and also celebrate with you. Please join me in the birthday and anniversary prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, on this their special day. Watch over them as they begin another year, and give them grace to keep the vows and promises they have made. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Raise them up if they fall. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. And may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide in their hearts all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to all. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you, 
and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into your care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far away from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you. Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember Elaine, Suzanne, Chris, Barbie, Julie, John, Brendan and family, Carolyn, Mike, Philip, Len, Shannon, Jim, Kennedy, Janet, Will, Ben, Fred, Brian, Scott, Ken, and Gilbert. Remember all the victims of COVID-19 and their families and healthcare workers too. Remember all students, teachers, and all who work in schools. 
Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ. Remember Carolyn and Joseph. And grant that we may find your inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, with Peter and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may now receive the consecrated bread. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood 
of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Before we dismiss, we have some um, instruction. You may remain in your pew for as long as you would like to pray or to just enjoy the quiet and the beauty. When you, before you do leave, please spray down your entire pew with the disinfectant, even the part you didn't sit in, and even the book rack, and even the empty pew in front of you. Don't wipe down the disinfectant. It has to sit there for four minutes. And our ushers and our sexton will be by to wipe it down after you leave. Wait for the ushers to come dismiss you, please. And when you exit, rather than exiting to the middle aisle, please exit to the side aisle. There are trash cans by the pillars. And there's a, a wooden recycling bin in the narthex where you can uh, place your leaflets. Uh, because of COVID, we're not recycling them. Another great option is to take them home so you can go over the readings and have the announcements with you. Please don't congregate in the narthex. Um, go ahead and move to the outside, and, and we encourage you to greet one another outside, socially distance. Do you have any questions? All right, Deacon Betty. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.